Derek Juan is suing dog walker Danielle Lancaster for damages resulting from a dog attack. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case number 2002, Quam versus Lancaster. Mr. Quan, succinctly, your case involves a attack of a dog that was being walked by Miss Lancaster. She was dog walker. She didn't own the dog. Correct. The dog got away from her, and according to you, attacked you, attacked your dog, and you want to be compensated to the tune of $10,000. Correct. You were neither hospitalized, correct? I was not hospitalized. You were, not, you were neither hospitalized, and your dog was not hospitalized. Correct. I assume that you have some medical evidence as a result of this incident to show me that you suffered from a dog bite. Yes. Okay. And the dog bite was from the dog that was being walked by Miss Lancaster. Walked is, I'm not sure if I would use well, the term. she's a dog walker. Yes, she's but it was off walker. leash. She's not the owner of the dog. Correct. The incident happened at what date and time? December 22nd, 2021 at approximately 1.30 p.m. And you were walking your dog, which is what breed? A 20-pound wiener dog mix. And you were a dog walker. How long had you been in charge of walking this dog? Um, at that point, it was about a week. What kind of dog was it? Um, I believe it was a boxer mix. Not 100% sure. How old? Two, three years old, give or take. Who are the owners of the dog? The owners, I can't remember their name. One of uh, Mike, but I don't remember their last names. But um, you remember the owners' names? Yes. And it would be fair to say that you knew their names because you tried to sue them. I contacted them, yes, but did not sue them. And you contacted them because they're the owners of the dog and they have a house. Mm -hmm. Uh Uh-huh is not an answer. Yes. And the house usually has homeowner's insurance. Correct. Correct. And after contacting them, and it's their dog, so they are ultimately responsible for their dog, you opted not to seek compensation for your alleged injuries and this attack, but to sue the dog walker. Correct. Just my own information, Mr. Kwan, do you want to tell me why you did that? Yeah. So per California strict liability law, the anybody who takes physical ownership or responsibility for a dog is also responsible for any sort of attacks or damages it causes while they are uh, responsible for that dog. Regardless okay, just of- a second. So what you're saying is in the state of California, if you are walking a dog, and she says she was walking this dog for a week, how many times a day every day? Uh, two times a day. Twice a day. And she had this job for a week. That under all circumstances, she is responsible for any injury that the dog does. Is that what you're saying? Correct. And what code is that? I have a statute over here. Just um, tell me the statute. Per California dog bite law. I don't have the number, but I can bring it up to the court. Would you bring it up? It's California Civil Code 3342. Do you have it? I could pull it up. I have my notes. Could you do? Could you pull it up for me? Mm -hmm. And I'll come back to you in a second, Sarah. I'm just curious about it. Okay, now let's tell me about the incident, sir. Sure. So at the time that I uh, described earlier, I was walking my 20-pound wiener dog mix while my mother walked um, my infant son, who was three months at the time, in a stroller. Okay. I mean, it's not that I don't care about him (laughs) and I don't care about your mother, but they have nothing to do with this case. Well, Well, they do have something to do with this case because... When we turned onto the block, I turned and I saw an off-leash dog roughly three times the size of mine, and I saw the defendant, Miss Lancaster. She gave no warning that the dog was off-leash, and at that point, the, I later learned that the dog... Now, don't tell me. Just tell me what happened, sir. Okay. You saw Miss Lancaster, and she was walking this dog off-leash. Correct. And? She gave no indication. No, no, no. Not that she gave me no indication. Okay. She was walking this dog off leash. Correct. So you saw the dog off leash. Yes. Okay. And, and about how far were you from her when you saw the dog off leash? Across the street. So roughly 40 feet. Okay. And? The dog charged across the street. Okay. The dog ran across the street. Yes. And started aggressively biting, uh, lunging, and barking at my dog. Okay. So at that point, the dog is, ran across the street and is in an aggressive stance barking at your dog. Correct. Hadn't touched your dog. Correct. Okay. What happened next? It then diverted its attention towards my infant son in a stroller and my mother and started jumping on the stroller. Did the dog, in fact, jump on the stroller? Yes. 
And? And my response was to no, try to divert the no. attention. What did you do? The dog jumped on the stroller. Yes. Didn't hurt your son, didn't hurt your mother. Yes. So I got the attention of the dog again. How did you do that? By picking up my dog, who was on leash. Well, that doesn't necessarily get attention to the dog. You say, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> No. Correct. A, uh, but a lot you didn't say that. Moment, you just but... picked up your dog. Yes. Okay. Yes. Probably okay. exclaimed in no, order no, to no, get no, attention no. I, I, of the you dog. You told me what you did. You picked up your dog and... And started running across the street. Started running... Just a second. Started running across the street in the direction of where the dog had come from? Correct. And at that time, the dog was on the other side of the street? Yes. So <laughs> let me understand this. You pick up your dog. Your mother is standing behind you in the stroller with your son. You leave your mother, your son, on one side of the street, and you grab your wiener dog mix and run across the street. Correct. This was after I got the attention of the dog, by the way. <laughs> okay. So now you got the attention of the dog. Yes. Ran across the street, so you were trying to divert the dog's attention, and yes. the dog followed you. Yes. It chased me. Good. And you were running in her direction? No. The Miss Lancaster had crossed the street at that point to where we were originally so we, walking. She was on your side of the street. You were going back to where you had initially seen her. Correct. Okay, so she had followed her dog across the street. Yes. Was she saying anything? We at had that repeated. Point? We made repeated pleas to ask for her no, no, to no, control no. the situation. She was. She ran across the street because mm -hmm. all this happened within seconds. Yes. She ran across the street. Was she saying anything she to the was, dog? She was yelling, I'm so sorry, and I can't do anything. Okay, is that what you were yelling? Um, I, re I think I was yelling, I'm so sorry, I don't know what to do, because I was in an extreme state of panic. I was probably having a panic okay, attack. Okay, I'm so sorry, I don't yeah. know what to do. <laughs> okay, and? And after I ran across the street, when the dog chased me, I fell down. The dog ended up biting me on my left arm. Okay, and I'd like to see whatever medical report you have from the bite on... Your left arm. So the doctor said that... No, don't tell me what the doctor said. <laughs> I haven't... Could I, have, I see... I have a picture. May I see Absolutely. a medical... Rep Did you understand my no. words? I said, may I see a medical report from a I do not have a medical doctor. report. So you didn't go to the doctor. I The question is, did you go to the doctor, Mr. Kwan? I did Kwan? a virtual doctor's Just visit. A because this was during the height of the pandemic. And what was the name of the doctor with whom you had a virtual visit? I do not remember should remember. You're suing for $10,000. You should have all that information. Because if you have a virtual medical visit, Mr. Kwan, there is a record of that. Doctor keeps a record of that. Do you understand? Correct. Okay. So now you're down. And this happened, according to you, on December 22nd. Did you get the dog's information? I did. On December 22nd? Yes. When did you speak to the owners of the dog? I spoke to the the owners actually that day because I wanted to get the uh, rabies vaccination paperwork. Did you get the rabies vaccination paperwork? Yes. On the 22nd? Yes. Now I'll see your photograph, sir. I have that statute whenever you're ready. I got it. Time is everything. Okay, so the knee injury is when you fell. Correct. And the arm is a combination scratch and maybe tooth mark. Yes, there are tooth marks on there, but not punctured. Well, I don't know. This long thing is not a tooth mark. So just one other question, Mr. Kwan. When you told the owners about this on the 22nd, when was the next time you contacted them? First, you wanted to find out whether or not the dog had received rabies shots. You were satisfied that it did, that you didn't have to see a doctor other than a virtual visit with a doctor whose name you don't remember. When did you decide not to sue the owners of the dog, who are homeowners and I wrote who have the, homeowners insurance? Yep. I wrote the owners of the dog a demand letter, and that is when I contacted them back, probably about two months after the incident. Okay. So you wrote them a demand letter? Correct. And did they respond to your demand letter? Yes. Do you have copies of those letters? Yes, I do. I'd like to see copies of your letter and their response. That's the demand letter that I... I just want to see copies okay. of your letter and their response. Are they both here? They, did, they, only res they responded by calling me on the phone, not with a formal oh. uh, written statement. Really? Claims dog walker Danielle Lancaster owes for injuries resulting from a dog attack.
Oh. Well, you say the dog's a pit bull. The dog was a pit bull? I believe so. Dog a pit bull? Um, I asked after the incident. I did ask as well if it was a pit bull. They said, no, it's a boxer mix. Do you have a video of the incident? You have a video? Somebody yes. has a video? Yeah. Correct. Someone's ring camera. Okay. I'm going to allow you to tell me what the owner said in the conversation that they had with you. I'm not accepting it for the truth of the statement, only that you had a conversation with them, which is why you brought this action against Miss Lancaster today. Correct. So they decided, we're not going to put this in writing. We're going to call Mr. Kwan. Correct. And what did they tell you? They were very amicable about the situation, and we're trying to solve the situation no. to make me whole. Being amicable is subjective. Mm -hmm. I want you to tell me what you said to them and what they said to you. What they said to me was that they would look into their homeowner's insurance policy in order to compensate me. Through a series of conversations, I decided that my grievance was not towards them because they were not exhibiting negligence in this situation. Oh, no, I don't believe that, Mr. Kwan. Be very careful about what you say to me, sir. As between homeowners who have insurance and... This young woman who has to walk dogs for a living, if I was somebody interested in $17,000, I wouldn't sue her. I would sue somebody who had, Kathy Bates said in one of my favorite movies, I'm older and I have more insurance. <laughs> so that answer that you just gave me was a whole lot of who shot John. The reason you decided not to proceed against the dog's owners is what? The, the reason why I proceeded not to go against the dog's owners is because I have a, um, because some things are more important than money. And in this situation, I have more of an issue with the dog walker and her behavior during the situation rather than being compensated. Well, let me suggest this to you, Mr. Kwan. There is no question that if Miss Lancaster was walking this dog and the dog was off leash, she was negligent. There's also no question in my mind that the extent of your damages is excessive. Very excessive. So... But, but we're only counting physical damages. Just a there. second. What I'm telling you is the amount of your damages is excessive. And if you wanted anywhere near that money, you could have sued both people. You could have sued the owner of the dog, as not only did they have the dog that attacked you, but they have as Kathy Bates would say, insurance. And you would join the defendant as a party to that action. You would say you're all responsible. You own the dog, which you say was a pit bull, right? which you say was a pit bull, who just mauled and killed somebody in New York last week. An owner. You didn't do that. So I'm not getting all of this kumbaya business that the person responsible. Do you understand? Yeah, I'm just not buying it, Mr. Kwan. We understand each other? Yes, absolutely. Okay. For somebody who has no medical, you had injuries and you have to be compensated. You had no good excuse for walking the dog off leash. I wasn't walking him off leash. Um, the ha when I was in the house happened, I had a key on the other side of the door. When I reached for that key, he scooted as hard as I could between my legs and got out. It wasn't that I was walking him and just decided to take him so off the leash. So you were negligent in letting the dog out? Unfortunately, yeah. Yes. But the dog had also been out for an hour at the time yes. of the incident. Yeah, because when I was trying to get him back in, um, but many attempts, um, he was very hard to get in. And at that point, I was already having a panic attack. No, very no, no, emotional. No, 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 okay. no, Miss Lancaster, let's get it together. Mm -hmm. Let's get it together. Mr. Kwan says that the dog was out for a period of time and you weren't chasing the dog when he first saw you. You were in a walking mode. I so would, the dog may have initially gotten out. Miss Lanka, don't. You, you know, I'm an ecumenical abuser. Were you out with the dog for a period of time? Yes. Did you have a leash in your hand? Uh, I think I um, was. Um is not an answer. I Did you have a leash in your hand? No. How long were you out with the dog? Probably around an hour at that point. Okay. I was trying to get him back in, and twice okay. I did have him okay. by the collar, and he did wasn't he was, having you it. You didn't have him by the collar when he ran across the street? No, but before then, I did. I don't did. care what okay. happened before then. Okay. Before then, I was 21 years old, and I looked great in a bikini. Now, not so much. <laughs> All right, Mr. Kwan, this letter was written to Miss Lancaster. Correct. I asked you for the letter that you wrote to the owners of the dog. I do not have that with me right now. Could we key up this video that I understand we have?
can see my mother and infant so son sorry. playing. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. Call the person out. He bit me. I know I will because he bit me too. I know. Just grab him by the neck. I can't. He bit me twice on my hand already. I don't know what to do. It's been an hour. I seriously don't know what to do. He bit me twice already. And I tried to get him on the leash and he bit me twice. I don't know what to do. It's, it's I am so sorry. I am so sorry. Can I see the beginning of that and see if you can freeze frame on the dog, please? By the way, you do have a leash in your hand. Yeah, yeah I just realized. Yeah. yeah, I do have the leash, actually. So, I'm going to walk over to the monitor. So although the statute uses the word owner, there's vicarious liability if someone else assumed responsibility of the dog, even though the statute is clear, it only lists the word owner. But in California, they could be held liable through vicarious liability, a walker. A walker. That assumed responsibility okay. for the animal. Okay. Danielle Lancaster owes for damages. After he was attacked by the dog, Danielle was walking. So, Miss Lancaster, it does appear to me that you were sort of overwhelmed by this dog. Yes, but very much. Bottom so. line is that Mr. Kwan was injured and frightened, not seriously injured, but seriously enough that if it were me, I would be furious as a result of your negligence. And he neither suffered serious physical injury, certainly not serious enough for him not to go to work for a week. I don't know what kind of work you do, but not serious enough unless you, I don't know, unless you model Bermuda shorts. You don't model Bermuda shorts, do you, Mr. Kwan? Just in my spare time. Of course not. And you had no medical bills because you didn't see a doctor. But you were attacked. And I actually don't know why you didn't sue the owners of this dog, which looks scarcely like any boxer I've ever seen. And it is possible in California that certain dogs are not insurable. I don't know the answer to that question. It will not insure you in a homeowner's policy if you have a certain kind of dog. Are you familiar with that, sir? Yes. What are you familiar with? You're very familiar with statutes. So what is the law in California with regard to insurance? Can you be denied insurance or have to pay an excess premium if you have a dog that is either a pit bull or a pit bull mix? I believe so. You believe so. And would it be a fair statement, sir, that their homeowners either covered their dog or didn't? They were looking into it, and they had renter's insurance that I believe um, covered it. That you believe covered it? Oh, very foolish of you not to go against them. Okay. If you accept responsibility for a dog, you're supposed to be smart enough to look at a dog and say, you know what, why would you ask what kind of dog this is? Now, you let the dog out, and the dog was out with you for an hour. Yes. Yeah. And during that time, you were walking around the neighborhood and you had sufficient opportunity. You were walking around the neighborhood. I wouldn't say walking. I what was you clearly trying to get the dog back in. And twice I did have him by the collar. And that's what I said in the video. I had him by the collar. And then both times he turned to, to nip at me on on my wrist. So which is why I let go, because you didn't I didn't want to get, want to get bit. I know you said so I was trying to have him follow me, which is what the owners told me to do. I had treats so in my you called the hand. owners? Yes, I did call and the... You, said to, you called the owners yes. and you told the owners what was going on? Yes, I did. They knew what was going on. Uh, I would have sued the owners. Mr. Kwan, I would have absolutely sued the owners unless they didn't have insurance that covered the dog, which is a problem for them if they had renter's insurance. In any event, Ms. Lancaster, you assumed responsibility of this dog, and based upon your own negligence, your negligence, forget about the dog's breed, forget about the, these other people. As a result of your negligence, he was injured, and you have to compensate him for that. Judge him for the plaintiff in the amount of $5,000. We're finished. Court is adjourned. I don't think he even got bit. The doctor said that most of my injuries were emotional, but I did receive a bite from the dog onto my arm, but not a puncture wound. I think he just, you know, 
wanted some extra cash from me because that was probably an easier target. Even though I didn't have any physical injuries, who knows how long my night terrors will last for. I was literally having the whole panic attack, which is why, you know, I had the reaction I did. Yeah, I totally understand that, but the dog was off leash for an hour. She could have called the police or animal control during that time. Don't open the door even in the slightest to a dog. Just wait till, you know, they're away and gone. Mostly my MO is getting back at those that I have grievances against. Let's not even get started with dog breed because I think the world knows where I live in that street. Mm -hmm. And 10 days ago, a woman who was watching a pit bull for one of her children, 64 year old woman, her husband came home from work and found the dog eating her in the backyard. Sadly, she died. And there are certain breeds that are more dangerous than others. People have to recognize that. And if you choose to get a dog that is potentially more dangerous, Sarah, <laughs> you know, and I know that there are pit bull lovers out there and say, mine is the sweetest, mine is the loveliest, but then you have to accept responsibility if there's an issue. And clearly this dog was an issue because I believe this young woman. Mm -hmm. Didn't you believe her? I believed her, and I think that dog walkers should also be cautious of what animals they're choosing to walk because she could be held vicariously liable, so you might want to stick to five-pound chihuahuas yeah, from now right, on, maybe. Right. I mean, she was visibly very Stressed. upset. Visibly, and she said on the video, he bit me twice yeah. on the hand because she tried to get a hold mm -hmm. of him. But she was still out with the dog for an hour, but he was, in fact, injured. Mm -hmm. And whether he went to the hospital or not, that's pretty traumatic. Yeah, I don't think you can level it down to actual damages from a bill, but there's some component of punitive damages as well for the pain and suffering and trauma from yeah. an event like that. That's true. But f forget falling down and being attacked by a dog. Our family would feel as if, you know, you've got a splinter in your hand as a result of somebody's negligence or a nail that went into your foot as a result mm -hmm. of somebody being careless is very frightening. Anyway, people have to use their noodle. Tabitha and Brandon Robinson are suing their customers, Aaron and Sandra Lang, for property damage and loss of income. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, everyone. Case 2152, Robinson versus Lane. Thank you. You're welcome. How long have you been in the business of renting party equipment? We've been in the business about two and a half years. And when you started the business, you started the business by purchasing how many pieces of equipment? We purchased three used units. Three used? Yes, obstacle courses. And we rented them out. And then we saved the money and then progressed uh, progressed uh, renting them out and getting more. Now, the jumper that you rented to the defendants yes, was one that you bought used or one that you bought new? I bought it new. When? I bought it on 7-19-21. I have the uh, receipt for it. I'd like to see it, please. Okay, and what you rented from them was a 38-foot obstacle course. We didn't rent from them. Who did? Uh, some friends of ours did. They used our property for their daughter's Sweet 16. They paid the Robinsons. They signed the rental agreement. We did not. Is that correct? Sandra is actually the one that handed me the cash. Um, did, did somebody sign a rental agreement? Yes. Who was it? It's a lady. Her name is... Okay, so let me understand that this is, a, let me frame it. You rented this piece of equipment, which is a 38-foot obstacle course, yeah. to someone whose name is, and according to your complaint, it was returned damaged. Yes. You say it can't be repaired, although you tried to patch it. Right. And you want the cost of a new obstacle course, and while you paid $4,500, you want $9,000. Well, we have, you claim I have a list of loss of rentals because that, people... That, that's, you're not entitled to that. Okay. More important, I want to know how you think if these people were not signatories to your rental agreement, why would you sue them? When we went there... May I see that, please, by the way, while she's telling me the story? This, um, when we went there to drop it off, we did all the, I, I dealt completely with Sandra. 
They run a business in their property, which is for uh, parties. Um, she said they do cigar club parties. They do Sweet 16 parties on their property. Okay, got it. You do this as a business? So, yes, we run. The answer is yes. Yes. You use your home property. Is it your home property yes. that you use? Yes. So you have a large enough piece of property that other people who want to make parties for their children do them at your house. Yes. So you took physical custody of this. No. Who did? The renters, the people. No, that, no, the... it's physical custody, not legal custody. We're not talking about legal custody. You took physical custody and put it on your property. The people that signed the original rental agreement were on the property at the time that they dropped it off. I don't care. It was on your property. Yes, it was on our property. So that's a yes. Yes. So it was on your property, but used by somebody else, and they were just using your property. Yes. Is that correct? I had it rented out on Sunday. So when I dropped it off, I told Sandra that we would have to come at 6.30 in the morning to pick it up, to clean it, and deliver it the next day. She agreed to that, because normally we don't leave it overnight if it's going out the next day, because we need to, to sterilize it. When we got there at 7 in the morning, we came in and we were getting ready to pick up the 38-foot obstacle. I noticed that the dogs had chewed, and their two dogs, a boxer and another dog, were still running around and lifting their leg and urinating on the bouncer. We told her, your dog ate our obstacle. There's pieces of the vinyl, which I have pictures of, of it, where your dog just ate you it. Have pictures of our dog chewing it? Just a second. I don't want to hear you again. I tried to ignore you quietly and figured you'd get the message. You don't shout out here. Go ahead. My husband said, um, excuse me, miss, we have a problem. Your dogs have eaten our obstacle. So then she went in to go and get her husband. Her husband came out. He signed paper saying he was responsible for a loss of rentals and the damages may, or replacement of it. May I see it, please? Yes. And also he sent text messages to our phone that same morning apologizing and saying he would do everything to replace it plus a loss of rentals that we were going to lose. I'd like to see those texts, and okay. I would like to see his signature on a piece of paper assuming responsibility. And then, just a second. And here's the text messages. Oh, would you show this to Mr. Lang, please? Yes. Would you sign that, sir? Yes. Okay. I signed it under distress. Under distress? Under there, distress. There's no such thing. You mean duress? Duress. She was... That's a dip, just a second. There's a difference between distress. D d duress. Okay. At 7.29 a.m., you said, I, Aaron Lang, recognize and acknowledge that a jumper obstacle course has been damaged from a dog. I will take care of the repairs and work with the rental company and its owners to get this resolved ASAP. And then about 15 minutes later, you wrote, I'm so sorry again. Let me know. When you drop it off, please. Okay, so you tried to drop it off the next day. I was trying to drop it off the next day to Albert, our repa a repair guy. That now, just a second, just answer my question. It doesn't require a long answer. The next day, you were trying to get it resolved, and yes. you're back and forth with him, let me know, et cetera, et cetera. And then you don't hear from him. No. Then it stopped. I tried he calling you. I tried messaging you to get this resolved. Yes. Okay. Well, Mr. Lang, there's no question you acknowledge the damage and you agree to pay for it. That's what you have. Can I have that back? You acknowledged in here that you would take full responsibility for this. What's your defense? My defense is when they arrived on the property to pick up their jumper that was left unaccounted for over... No, no, no. When they arrived... So when they arrived and they announced to us that there was damage to their obstacle course... Well, they came to you first. Yes. Correct. Is that, don't speak. They came to you first. Yes. You came outside. Yes. Okay. And when you came outside, you had a conversation with whom? I believe Miss Robinson. With Mrs. Robinson? Yes. Okay. And what did you say to her and what did she say to you? She just went hysterically, like, upset that the jumper was damaged, and that's when I went inside but and talked to her husband. What did she say? She just started crying and... She started to cry. Yeah, and she's like, your, dog, your dog's damaged my obstacle course. Just a second. So she was crying. Yes. And did you have any issue 
when she said to you, your dogs damaged my obstacle course, did you see what was bitten off from the obstacle course? I That's either a yes, yes or a no. The answer yes. is yes. Okay, what kind of dogs do you have? A German Shepherd and a Boxer. And where had you stored this unit overnight? It was left outside. In the backyard, in the front yard? We live on a huge ranch, so it's, it's a two and a half acre parcel. And it's been known that our neighbor dogs always hop. I don't want to hear neighbor dogs. I don't want to hear coyotes. I don't want to hear bears. Tabitha and Brandon Robinson claim their customers, Aaron and Sandra Lang, refuse to pay the costs of repairs after damaging their jumper house. Okay, now I'm going to get back to you. So now your wife comes in to get you and you went outside. Yes. And? I go outside. Who else is there? Just my wife and I. So just the two of you? Just the two of us were home. And they were there? And they were there. Both of them? Equipment. Yes. Okay. And their daughter. Okay. And? I go outside. Uh, Miss Robinson is completely hysterical, crying, crying, just out of control in hysterics. Okay. Um, her husband's yelling, screaming, profanity. Now tell me, oh, I want you to tell me exactly, no, I want you to tell me exactly, she's crying and he starts yelling. Yes. Well, you came out and said what to them when you came out? And then I, I want to hear exactly what was said. I asked to see the damage, to, to, for them to show me what was going on, what had happened. They showed me the damage. We both took pictures. Again, No, they both, they, you both, both took, pictures. just a second. So he composed himself long enough to take pictures. Yes. And you, you were composed enough to take pictures. Yes, I was. Which you pictures. have. Yes. And then what happened? Throughout their screaming. No, no, I want you to tell me. Now you're I'm taking pictures, you. you're taking pictures, and? Brandon is on the phone with their repair guy of some sort. Okay, uh, so he's on the phone, he's composed enough to be on the phone. Now, before he got on the phone with his repair guy, did you discuss with him your responsibility to take care of the damage? I told That's you. either yes, yes or a no. Yes. Yes. So once you said, I'll take care of the damage, he got on the phone with his repair guy. Before I agreed to take care of the damages, before we discussed that, he was already on the on phone. The phone. The okay, and then he got off the phone, but you signed this the same day. So I want to know when in this conversation you signed it. You need something to lean on. Somebody has to give you a piece of paper. Somebody has to get a pen. I did not fill out that piece of paper. You don't have Tabitha to. Tabitha is the one that filled out the piece of paper in their vehicle. Who did? Miss Robinson is the one that filled it out in her vehicle. Okay, and then so just a second. So she got in her vehicle. Crying in hysterics. Oh, I don't care. She got in her vehicle, and where was her husband? Outside loading a bouncer. So he was outside. Yes. She went inside her vehicle, and he was busy. Yes. And you live in a house. Yes. And you felt pressured. Yes. You felt as if you were being extorted. Bullied, yes. Did you go inside to call the police? No, I did not. I should have. Yeah. But you didn't. I did not. You went over to the truck where she was hysterical. She wrote out this document, right? Yes. And you signed it. Yes, I did. There we go. Make my life very easy. Did your repair guy try to fix the bouncer? I do have a receipt where we did have it, tried to get it te a temporary patch where we paid $600 just to make sure we could still rent it out. So that was paid for. This is my repairman. Um, he is my witness. And then also I do have a um, paper with an estimate of what it would be to repair the obstacle. May I see it, please? After he did this job, which he did on October 4th, from the 3rd to the 4th, did you rent it out? No, we tried to, but this, I have a pictures that I brought of what happens when the air flows through. The patches won't stay. You have to go up inside the bouncer and actually put a patch on the inside and the outside, okay. and it would cost more money. My witness can, he Just is a the second. repair guy that can tell you. What you're telling me is that your witness prepared this estimate of what it would cost to repair the jumper. Yes. Stand up, sir. I don't need an explanation of this. I'm not going into the repair jumper business. Thankfully, I have a job, and I'm too old to learn anything new. Did you prepare this estimate to yes, fix the jumper? Yes, ma'am. That is the full estimate to repair it properly. To, to do it properly? Location. Yes. Okay. The first one was Shush. a temporary repair. Uh, listen, 
I got it. I'm a fast learner, and anybody who watches this program better learn to think fast, too, because I have a lot of things to do today. So you prepare this. So for $2,500, in addition to the $600, did they pay you the $600? Yes. So in addition to the $600, so in total, $3,100 would fix the jumper. Correct. Great. That's what you agreed to pay, sir. You agreed to do the repairs on the jumper. Now, you want a new jumper. You're not going to get a new jumper. You're not going to get damaged for lost income. He's going to fix the jumper. How long is it going to take you? Roughly about two days. Two, to two days. Mm. Piece of cake. $3,100. Mm. Judgment for the plaintiff. We're done. This court is adjourned. I don't owe them anything. I didn't rent the bouncer. I'm just happy that we're going to have our bouncer repaired. Because they're money hungry. They're looking for a payday. The truth always comes out, and what's right is what's right. So initially, after reading the papers, I thought the plaintiffs, while perfectly matched in their tops, were suing the wrong people because these people didn't sign the rental agreement. So any damage or any agreement to pay damage, I was with you from the beginning that these are the wrong people. It came out that they had a little bit more involvement, the defendants, okay. than they, than they, they agreed, wanted. They agreed to pay. Exactly. He knew he did the wrong thing. He probably saw his dog destroy the jumper from the kitchen window and felt bad and knew that it was his responsibility. I don't think that they deserve $9,000 for a brand new no, jumper, they, but they deserve to get it fixed to get and it to fixed. keep making money off of it. Brianna Sloniker is suing her buyer, Charity Hoovener, for the cost of a golden retriever puppy. Court, come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Case 2188, Sloniker versus Hoovener. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Sloniker, is this your boyfriend? Hi, yes. Uh, this is my, my boyfriend and the father of our uh, two-year-old child. Okay, you could stand up with her. In addition to a two-year-old child, you also had two dogs. Where were you living at the time of this incident? Uh, so we were living in our uh, house. In your house where? In Redford, Michigan. Do you own the house or rent it? We rent it. Are you still living there? Yes, we are. Do you work? Uh, no, I... Uh, You're not... The answer is no. I am a writer. I'm also two months pregnant, too, so... The question is, do you work and make a living? Yes. At what? Writing. Okay. Who do you write for? Uh, myself, self-publishing. Well, how much money did you make last year self-publishing? Zero. Zero? Yeah. So the answer is, you don't work and you don't make any money. And what about you, boyfriend? I currently, at the moment, am a custodian for the Hills School District. Okay, and how much do you earn? Uh, I earn sixteen fifty an hour. And what's your rent? Uh, it's uh, fourteen forty five. Who pays it? There's no question you don't. <laughs> uh, he, he does. I do. Impossible. Not $16 an hour. Our brother currently lives with my, what? Bro my brother lives with us as well, so we have a roommate. That's how we pay for it. And he pays some of the rent? Yes. Uh, is your rent current? Yes. And you have a car? I do. So you have a car and insurance. You I have do. a car? Well, I somehow do. you're very economical. Now, you had two dogs. You had financial hardship according to your complaint, and you could no longer take care of the dogs. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. What kind of dogs were they? Our, our one-year-old um, dog named Courage, he is a Border Collie, an Australian Shepherd mix. He's a Border Collie? Yes. Where did you get him from? We got him from a breeder back in 2021. It was probably December 2nd of 2021. And what was the other dog? The other dog, her name uh, was Danny. She was a purebred golden retriever puppy that uh, we had bought, purchased um, October 7th, 2022. Yeah. Okay. Now, how much did you pay for the Border Collie? We paid $500 for the Border Collie. I'm still figuring out how you're all budgeting. And how much did you pay for the Golden Retriever? We also paid $500 for the Golden Retriever. Where did you get the money from? A tax return. So let me understand this. You have a two-year-old baby? Yes. You have a two-year-old baby. You got tax returns from the only income from the house, which is his, where he earned $16 an hour. And what you did was you spent $1,000 of your tax return on two dogs. I just am clarifying that in my own mind. Huh? Yeah, yes. That would be a right. Okie dokie. When you could no longer either physically and or financially take care of the dogs, you put an ad on the internet. What part of the internet? Uh, we, we put the ad on Craigslist and Hoobly. Craigslist and? Hoobly. 
It's like another Craigslist type online. You have a copy of the ad? Yes, I do. I'd like to see them. Okay, so you put ads for both dogs. One, you said small rehoming fee, not a breeder, needs a new home, call for details. The other is the one-year-old Border Collie Aussie Mix, and you had rehoming fee of $200. Yes. Okay, this says absolutely nothing about fostering short-term, you get the dogs back, nothing and no other criteria in here. Yes. Nothing. So this is your complaint. The defendant answered your ads. You brought the two dogs over to her. She gave you $100. Yes. Yes. You left the two dogs with her. You were on your way back to wherever you lived, were in the car, and according to you, you had a change of heart. Yes. Uh, yes, Your Honor. And you called her and you said to her, we're coming back. Yes. How long did that process take you? It was within the two hours we had left. So within two hours, you called her and said, I changed my mind. Yes. And what did she say to you? She had said that she had given the dog away. One of them? One of them, yeah. OK. She said, I gave the dog away. Did she tell you to whom? Did she tell you what circumstances? Did she tell you? She said that she had given the dog to a lady named Cindy, and she mentioned that she gave this Danny to... You have text messages? Is what you're reading from text messages? Yeah, yeah. I'd like to see it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is a text in the evening, and she says to you, my friend is traveling back to Tennessee now with my friend Cindy. Now, you went back to the house and you picked up one of the dogs. Yes. Courage. And did you give her back the $100? Uh, no, That's I did That's either not. yes or no. No. Why not? Brianna Slaniker claims her buyer, Charity Hoovener, wrongfully gave away a golden retriever after promising to keep the puppy. Now, you went back to the house and you picked up one of the dogs. Yes. Courage. And... Did you give her back the $100? Uh, no, That's I did That's either not. yes or no? No. Why not? Because she kept the other dog, uh, Danny, which was a purebred golden retriever. The condition was f to have both dogs together. OK, They're show me where that is. Show me something in writing where that was a condition. It certainly wasn't in your ad. It certainly wasn't in your ad, which just said you needed to find new homes for both your dogs. It, it was Did you ever say anything to the defendant about getting a better offer for the Golden Retriever? No. Yes. Did you ever say... Did you ever say anything to the defendant, either on the phone or in a text, that you believed that you could get more for the Golden Retriever because he would pay $500 for it as a puppy. This was just a couple of months later. It was still a puppy. I'm asking you, did you say anything to her about being able to get more money for her? Mm -hmm. No, no, I, no, I did not. We want our dog back because of our other dog, Courage. And uh, he, Well, she... what makes you think you can have the dog back? You made a deal. She paid you $100. You took the $100. You didn't return the $100 to her. One of the dogs was already rehomed to a, yet another person. She gave you the dog back. She gave you one back, despite the fact that you didn't give her any money. Why do you think that this is a deal that you can say, well, I changed my mind? What makes you? Because it was in a verbal condition to keep the dogs together. She yeah, had... Absolutely not. Shh. Sorry. It was a verbal condition to keep the dogs together. They were a bonded pair, and um, she said that if we wanted to, we could... In what month did you sell the dogs to the defendant? It was December 4th, 2022. 12-4. Now, you got, according to you, the Golden Retriever in October of 2022. So you had, at most, the dogs together for two months. Yes. Yes. Well, that's not a bonding experience. How old was the Golden Retriever? She was uh, two months old when we got her. So she was four months old? Yes. 
Well, you certainly could have gotten more than $100 for you. She must have been really desperate for that 100 bucks. I really just want my dogs together. Well, they're not together. Then you should have thought of that before you put ads here. You changed your mind. That's it. You changed for whatever reason. You felt sad in the car going home. Or she's going to tell me that you had a conversation with her that involved money. No. I'm ready. Hi, All God. I want to know from you at this point is, and it's really not dispositive of this case, but it was in your answer. Did you ever have a conversation after she dropped the dogs off about money? Yes. Tell me about the conversation. When was it? Was it in the car? Or it was, was it by my door, by my side door. When? At what point in this? When they came back? Or when, when they came back. She said, I got offered a lot more money for this dog. I think you're a scam artist. Yeah. And, I, and I want what's due. I, I, I want the rest of my money. What the rest of your money? No. I don't know. No, yeah, I know. Never said that. Yes. No. She, she got certainly, offered more money, she Your certainly, Honor. She certainly could have gotten more she for this golden retriever. Have. She certainly could have gotten more money yes. for the golden retriever than the $100 that you gave her for both dogs. Yes, for both. But she accepted the $100, and she never returned the $100. That's it. Finished. What? Your Honor, you I wanted to you keep courage, and my friend here, Cindy, took Danny. Oh, so she's, you have the other dog? I do, yes. I have the other dog. Well, step up. So you were going to Tennessee? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Tell me about the conversation that you had with Ms. Hovener? Yes. On the date that they dropped the dog off. Okay. Um, she had called me and let me know that well, first Rihanna, of all, I believe is her name, was going to drop the dogs off. When did you have this discussion? That was on the 4th, on December 4th, 2022. 2022. She called me, um, I would be guessing, I don't know, I'm going to say maybe 5 in the afternoon, and uh, told me that I think her name's Brianna, was going to be dropping the dogs off. For $100. For $100. And she asked me, do you have, you know, $100? And I said, well, sure. So, so I, you gave her $100? I gave her $100 to give, yes. To Brianna. And um, I was waiting, and she was running just a little late. We was going to Tennessee. We had to get diapers and stuff. So I left $100 with charity, and I said, just in case she comes while I'm gone, you have the money to give her, and I'll come back when, you know, we're done shopping to get the dog. Okay. Now, when had you discussed with her the $100 for both dogs? Over the phone, Your Honor. Tell me about the conversation. The conversation went, we had discussed the 100 for both Courage and Do you Danny. have that in texts? Yes. I'd like to see it. Not all of them, just not all of it. Just the one that she's asking about. Yeah. How is the dog? She's doing really good. Yeah, I got her to the vet. She's and she's growing. Oh, she um, two weeks ago was her last shots, and she's already forty-one pounds. She's just growing. growing like a weed. Yes, yes. Okay, I'm going to read this to you. I am trying hard to come up with a hundred more dollars, dear. I have one hundred. And you respond to her, okay, we're just going to have to feed them bread until somebody buys them. Then she answers you, I will come up with the rest. You were just feeding these puppies bread? Brianna Slaniker is accusing her buyer, Charity Hoovener, of giving away a golden retriever hours after purchasing the puppy. Now, you respond to her, Okay, we're just going to have to feed them bread until somebody buys them. You were just feeding these puppies bread? That's what you wrote here. Who wrote this, you or him? I wrote it. And I would assume that your life circumstance hasn't changed. You're still not working, and he's still working for $16 an hour. Sure, yeah. Right? Yes. And at that point, back in December, what you said was, I can only afford, in effect, I can only afford to feed them bread until I... In, till somebody buys them. What's changed in your life? What's changed in your life financially that you think that, <coughs> that you think that you should be able to stretch your budget to feed so far a 40 pound dog and the other one? What's changed? Nothing. Ridiculous.
ridiculous people. It was jobless at the time. Kenyon was jobless at the time, Your Honor. Uh, what? Yes. He was jobless in December. Yes. You still took your tax returns and bought a dog for $500. Duh. She says to you, oh, they are both really fantastic dogs. And you respond, absolutely they are. It was a nice chapter to have them. Now their fate is with you or wherever their life journey takes them. Glad you have them now. That's what you wrote. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you're right. I'm probably going to fall madly in love. Anyway, then you changed your mind, and they reached out to Paws organization and had a chat about last night. Your suspected buyer is being rude to us, and we want our dog back. What's a Paws organization? What is that? When we had met her at her house, I was a little uneasy about giving her the dog and taking in consideration the area we live in in Metro Detroit. It's, there's a lot of dog fighting there, so I had to be sure that she was trustworthy. So she had mentioned to me that she was, uh, is a part of the Paws organization, which is a animal-friendly organization like uh, Okay. Oh, yeah. You say, now you want the dog back, and you say, option A, you pay us our asking price for the dog. What was your asking price? This is after you already got the 100 bucks. Okay, so now, after you got the 100 bucks, left the dogs with her, what was your asking price? What was your asking price? Uh, the, the value of her. What was the asking price? Um, you, it's your words. I'm a little confused, Opt I'm sorry. Option A, you give us you pay us our asking price for Danny. Or option B, we call our lawyers and take you to court. Yes, I, I at the time wanted her to repay, pay the meaning balance of Danny, how much we had bought her for, $500. So you wanted more money for the dog? Yes. Okay, well, you can't have it. You've already made your bargain. Your case is dismissed. We're done here. Thank you very much. This court is adjourned. I think that there's a lot of evidence, a lot of things that was left out and unsaid. I thought the judge's decision was fantastic. I just feel like everything wasn't said properly. That's probably on our part. I don't think it was necessarily fair, but that's what that's her decision. Cindy and I wanted the best interest in these dogs. It just didn't feel right, so immediately we went back to get the dogs and keep them and bring them home. It was about money. Just stick it out next time. You know, don't trust everybody. I just feel as if these dogs were not taken care of. I hope she does have a good home. You know the sadness of that whole case for me, Sarah, is the mindlessness of these two young people. I don't know where they got the $500 during that two-year period, an extra $500 to pay for each dog. Mm -hmm. I can only speculate. When I speculate, I say to myself, based upon my common sense, neither one of them look like they're robbing a store. <laughs> no. So I have to say to myself, you know who bought them those dogs? The president. Because <laughs> the only time you get that kind of chunk of money was it your stimulus or extended something. But even if it's extended unemployment, because he was unemployed, you have $1,500 a month in rent, you have a car, you have insurance, you have a two-year-old baby. What kind of thought process goes into buying two expensive dogs? And what big a dog, dogs. A big dog. Well, one of them was a yeah. big dog. One of them was a substantial-sized dog. Then you have a two-year-old baby, and you're going to feed the dog's bread. So what do you do? You have another baby. That makes sense. Makes perfect sense. And I guess I get so excited about it because based upon my history, it's the, always the children that end up suffering. I knew you for, were going there. Yeah. And, it's so, and it's true. Yeah. You're feeding a dog bread and think that that's an appropriate way to take care of an animal and trying to get it off your plate. The first thing I would be doing is making sure I didn't sign up for another child financially responsibility Yeah, well, wise. what are you going to do, cut the baby's formula with water so that you can stretch it? I mean, they both look like they could use a good meal. I don't understand. I just don't understand the thought process. And it's always the innocents that suffer yeah. because the, even the dogs are innocents. Yeah. Clearly, the babies, but clearly the dogs are innocents. You know, they just want to be fed yeah. and have a home with, you're not a four-month-old puppy eating bread until they can find somebody that can give them something more nourishing. It's absolutely outrageous and irresponsible and tragic. That's what I think. 
life isn't getting any different from what it was 40 years ago, it just stays the same. Yeah. Well, at least the golden retriever is in a good home, goes to the vet, hopefully is getting fed real dog food. So there's a, a bright yeah. side or a silver right. lining in, yeah. in the end of that. So. Right. Now, if you could just find reasonable parents to take care of these two children that they created. Mm -hmm. Tracy Gallen is suing her clients, Ronald Webster, for unpaid wages while working as a home aide. Court come to order. All rise. Have a seat, please. Hello, Judge. How are you, Kevin? Good, good. Case 2168, Gallon versus Webster. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Gallon, you are a home health aide. Yes, ma'am. Did you go to any particular school or have any training to be a home health aide? Well, I went to a CNA a nursing school. So I'm, I'm CNA? Uh-huh. What certified is Certified nursing assistant. And you've been doing that for over a decade? Correct. Do you need any license in the state where you're from in order to be a CNA? CNA, yes. Caregiver, no. But you have a license from CNA? Yes, ma'am. And also have a license for a medical assistant. Now, there came a time when you answered some sort of an ad by Mr. Webster. Mr. Webster had a mother who yes, was Your ill Honor. and needed some assistance in caring for her. Are you a working man, sir? Yes, Your Honor. What kind of work do you do? I'm a caterer and a DJ and also a driver. Do you get any salary from any of those jobs? It ranges from job to job. Uh, with Usually, a, how much? For DJing, a couple hundred. A um, couple for, hundred for how many hours? It's basically by the job, uh, the location, things of that nature. So it varies. It can vary. Caterer. Catering. We're building a family business, so basically getting started with it. Probably made as much as 1800 before for a catering event. So, again, it was brand new prior to the pandemic. Okay. And what's your steadiest source of income? Driving, as of now. How much do you make approximately an hour driving? Now, probably $22 with the subtractions. for $22 gas, an hour. Yes. Is that with or without your tips? That's with tips. Did you always live with your mother? I lived with her for quite some time. Say within the last 10 years. Within the last 10 years, I moved out three and a half years ago. Uh, due to illness, I was staying with her, so I was not really able to work. During that time, I went to school to become a caterer, cook, et cetera, culinary school, business school, because I did have aspirations to open a restaurant eventually or a catering business eventually. So you didn't live with your mother for the last three and a half years? No, Your Honor. What kind of illness did she have? My mother was diagnosed initially with COPD. I forgot exactly what those words are, but it's a pulmonary, it's, it's with her I know breathing. it's COPD, it's right, a pulmonary right, right. disease. You're better than me. Um, <laughs> then there's also emphysema, along with some other things that I was not made aware of until she passed away. How old was she? 68 years old. A kid? Yes, Your Honor. How long was she bedridden? From when to when? November 23rd until her death date of, of April 30th. So all the time that the plaintiff took care of her, she was bedridden? Yes, Your Honor. And was your mother pretty strong-willed? <laughs> yes, very much so, Your Honor. And the COPD and emphysema was in all probability, at least in part, if not in all, attributed to her smoking? Yes, Your Honor. Now, according to your complaint, Ms. Gallion, you worked for Mr. Webster in taking care of his mother, with whom he didn't live. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Did anyone else live with her? My son lived with her. How old is he? He's 29 years old now. What does he do? He was working at the time for Tesla. He was, but he's no longer. No longer. But at this time, he was working for Tesla? He was Tesla working for Tesla. The whole time? Yes, Your Honor. The Is whole time right? from being released from the hospital up until her death day, yes, Your Honor. Now, the house belonged to your mother? Via rent, but yes, Your Honor. Oh, she rented it? Yes, Your Honor. She was a renter. Yes, Your Honor. So her grandson just stayed there with her? Yes, Your Honor. So he slept there, and you were supposed to come during the day? Yes, Your Honor. Monday through Friday? Monday through Saturday. Okay. Now, do you have the ad that you got from the defendant? I do. I see it, Kevin, please. Thank you. I also have the messages, Your Honor, from it's, that it's ad. A, I just, let me just read this. Okay, so you were asking for somebody good to take care of your mother because she was a great caretaker all of her life. Yes, Your Very Honor. Very nice. All of my life. All of your life. Yes, Your Honor. And in it, he says, I-H-S-S -S for now. Would you explain what that is? It's in-home supportive services. From the federal government or the state? From, from the state, if I'm not mistaken. And you are from the state of? California. 
Well, this is what he wrote. So when you spoke to him with the same parameters of your employment as contained in his ad that you would be working for IHSS for now, maybe more in the future. I don't know what that means. I assume it means that if it works out, you'd be paying her in addition to what she was making with IHSS. No, Your Honor, I don't know. What does it mean? IHSS for now. Yes. Maybe more. What does that maybe more mean? I honestly can't recollect what that meant. I am aware that I did send that text message or that Facebook post. Is there anything in any of the text messages you have that indicates what maybe more is? Yeah, just verbally, he stated out of his mouth that anything extra, him and his son would pay out of pocket. Okay, extra like what? That extra has- hours, if the hours that I agreed to work to, if it needed to be extended, my traveling time, my toll from where I was driving from, he was supposed to... Reimburse you Yes, for. ma'am. Is that correct, sir? No, Your Honor. Now, you started working when? February 24th was my first day. From February 24th until April what? 23rd. And that was six days a week? It varied because uh, depending on my schedule. So every other week I will work Monday through Friday. And then the additional weeks I'll work Monday through Saturday. So it's between five and six days a week. And how many hours a day were you working? Five. So when you came into work, was the grandson still there? Sometimes he was, sometimes he wasn't. And if he wasn't, Miss Webster was alone? Correct. And when you left, was she alone? Yes, ma'am. And then hopefully the son came back to assist her at night. From my understanding, there was another caregiver that was supposed to be there at nighttime, which I never saw, so I'm not sure. Did you have another caregiver there at night? Yes, Your Honor. And who was that? Uh, Her name was... How long was she there? You mean her work time or her duration of employment? Duration of employment. The same time that Tracy started. Did she get paid? I'm not aware of... Just a second. Did you fill out papers for... I... Your Honor... That says it... No. If you didn't fill out papers for her, then either she was working for nothing or she got paid from you directly. Before you answer me, you had a nighttime person who was hired at the same time the plaintiff was. Either she was paid from an agency or she was paid from you or she did it gratuitously. What was it? Tracy Gallant. Claims her clients, Ronald Webster, owes for unpaid wages. Now, the agency, was she paid from an agency? Yes. Don't say say yes if she was not. If she was not paid by the agency because she didn't get paid, then say she never got any money from the agency. And if you never filled out any paperwork, she couldn't have gotten paid by the agency. Correct. Well, Well, why don't you just... Let let me rephrase that, because this is where the trepidation comes along. Neither of the caregivers were properly inputted into a home supportive care system. So there's an allotment that is allowed where caregivers can work in hopes of having a large lump sum payment once they get their paperwork, background check, and everything else taken care of. So up until the 29th, no one had gotten paid because no one had their paperwork taken care of yet. So it's on the 29th when that starts to come about. So I personally never signed any paperwork for neither of the caregivers. It's not true, Your Honor. Just a second. That's what he's saying. So he signed no paperwork. And she worked for you from February to March, March to April for two months. How much did you pay her in the two months that she worked there? Out of my pocket, I paid her $110 with a caveat. It was the first time that she worked on a Saturday. I asked her to do so because I had... Just tell me how much you paid her. $110. Anything else? Because I had a calendar DJing event. I was not fielding anything up until that point. Mr. Webster. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. You seem like a nice man. It's going to cost you money. You can either make it easy or make it hard. From February to April... Did your son work? Yes, Your Honor. He worked at Tesla. Then I'm not finished with you with that. Your son worked for Tesla. I assume Tesla paid him. I'm assuming he got paid too, Your Honor. And when you worked as a caterer, I assume you got paid. I was not working as a caterer during that time, Your Honor. Were you working as a driver during that time? I did work as a driver during that time, Your Honor. Did you get paid? Yes, Your Honor. Prior to the plaintiff getting hired and this other woman, had your son ever applied to be caregiver for your mother? Think carefully before you answer that question. Think very carefully because this one knows all. Had your son ever applied to be your mother's caregiver? Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Oh, makes it so easy. 
And when did he apply to be your mother's caregiver? According to the information I have, which I was just made aware of. Just a of. second. Yes, Your Honor. That's a lot of... Uh, your son is in your mother's house. Yes. You're there all the time because you're interested in your mother. You are the next of kin. You have to sign off. Did your son sign up to be your mother's caregiver and when? Give me the month, day, and year that he signed up. According to the paperwork I have, I'd have to look at it because I don't... Look at it. You can look at it, digest it. Give me the date. See, Sarah, it's what's on paper. It doesn't always make sense, right? Yeah. You know? You figure it out along the way. Follow the money. <laughs> yeah. Always. Always. Got to follow the money. Leads you right to where you want to be. Let's yeah. go. According to the paperwork I have here, his paperwork was started on August of 2021. When was it signed? It does not state that. And she started working in February. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. So between August and February, Mr. Webster, who took care of your mother? My son lived with her. He's, according to this, no. I was not privy to this information okay. before. Let me, let me understand something. Yes, Your Honor. This is not a House Select Committee investigation, sir. This is just a court where I'm trying to figure out who took care of your mother, who was unable to take care of herself from August until February when you got another caregiver, and whether that person was signed up to get in-home health benefits. So the answer is, partially I know, that your son, who lives with her, rent-free... No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, not with my mother, not rent-free. Uh, lives with her. Yes. Maybe not, then maybe Kevin and I are paying the rent. You never can tell. I don't know how much, and I can ask you how much money your son made between August and February, but maybe she got a little too difficult for him to deal with because at the end stages of being sick that way, you require a lot more help than you want your grandson to take care of. And so you needed somebody else. Now, I have about, just about Mr. Webster reached the end of creating the picture in this case, but the plaintiff was there, and so far you've given her 100 bucks in two months. You got paid during that time period. Your son who worked for Tesla got paid during that time period. You can bet your bottom booty that I got paid during that period because I worked. Nobody said to me, well, you didn't get your form in right there. We're not paying you. Really, you're not paying me. You can find me today getting my pedicure. <laughs> <laughs> she stayed, even though she didn't get paid. Now, if she didn't work for you, could you or your son have gone out to do their other work? Or would you have left your mother alone? What would you have done? Possibly made other arrangements, Your Honor. Possibly. Possibly. You mean get another sucker to work for free? You think that she should work for free? You think that she should work for free? No, Your Honor, but I don't think she should smoke cigarettes with my mother alone. Listen, you have a counterclaim. Your counterclaim is stupid. Okay. Your counterclaim is stupid. You just told me before your mother is the kind of woman that would do exactly what she wants to do. And what you think yourself, since you're not there and off doing your thing, somebody who's terminally ill... Not getting better. You knew that, right? I did know that. You did know that. And if your mother chose an easier way to go than the one you selected for her, that would have been her prerogative. That's also a fair statement. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So you didn't like the caring that she did for your mother, but actually her leaving had to do with your not paying her. You didn't fire her. Okay, let's put it another this way. Did you fire her? No, Your Honor, because I did not have the power to do no. so. You did not fire her. No, Your Honor. That's not who true, put in, Your Honor. Who is Ron Webster? I am Ronald. You hired her. No, Your Honor. Uh, well, this is you. Need a yes. good caregiver for my mom. Need. That means I need. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Now, let's go to one other place, okay? And then I'll let you talk. Right now, it doesn't seem to be that you're losing, right? Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> Tracy Gallen is accusing her client, Ronald Webster, of refusing to pay her after caring for his mother. Ronald claims Tracy smoked cigarettes and marijuana while working. How much do you think the time that she worked there taking care of your mother was worth? Your Honor, I, I personally cannot put a price on that. I know she's contracted to IHSS for $16 per hour. Did your mother have a life insurance policy? My mother had a couple of uh, life insurance policies, yes. What were they, and who were the beneficiaries? I was a beneficiary of, of one. Of How them. much? 
The total was $3,700, Your Honor. Did she have a separate policy for her burial? No, Your Honor. Did she own any property anywhere? No, Your Honor. So what was the total you received from the estate? The policies was set to pay $1,300, which I have not received all. You mean in addition to the $3,700, you'll, you'll receive another $1,300? $13,000 is what I meant to say. If oh, I said $1,300, I misspoke. Thirteen thousand. Total. Okay. How much did you pay for the internment, the service, if there was one, whatever? How much did you pay? You paid for it, I assume, out of this money. I have not done the, all the math. It's upwards of fifteen thousand dollars or so. As I'm still. I haven't done payments. all the math. I'm still Fine. making payments. How much on. are you owed? I have it there. Twenty six. The whole breakdown is. And that's the amount was twenty nine twelve minus the three hundred. You say he gave you three hundred, not one forty. Correct. Okay. He cashed at me three hundred. My question is: Is that at sixteen dollars an hour? Yes, ma'am. Which is what you would have made. Correct. Do you have any other evidence to support the fact that he was helping you, or that he agreed that this money was due and owed to you? I have the email here where he was asking me to send a total of hours what he owed me. Yeah, I see that, Kevin. Please. And then this is also the payment that he did pay me the 300. Well, this is from you. Yeah, he asked to me to send that to him because he kept acting No, the, but this is from you to him. Correct. Can I see your answer to this when she sends you this document? I don't have that email. Well, and do I, you have I, I'm not sure if there's an answer. I could check my phone. No. Okay. Now, in March, Miss mm -hmm. Gallum, where's my money? You know, I'm taking care of your mom. There's no money. What does he say? He kept blaming it on IHS. He needed to talk to them. And IHS just kept responding to me and was just like, he's crazy. I don't yes. know why he keep reaching out to us. We keep repeating the same thing. He said he, he never filled out you. forms. Also, this is the contract that he signed stating that I am the IHS provider. Um, if there's any extra fees that was over the hours that were allowed for her, that he would have to cover out of his pocket. No, he said he never filled out these forms. Well, no, that is the contract that he signed. You have, we have to sign that with IHHS first to approve me even the, being the worker for his mom. So once they approved me and I went through orientation, he signed that he would be responsible for the hours. I kind of marked it on there where it states that this is the contract and this, you know, this is what comes with it. Also, here are the timesheets I submitted. Okay. Not necessary. He acknowledges that he didn't pay you any more than, he says 100, you said three. That's actually in your favor. $2,612. I suggest you take it out of the $13,000 that you received from your mother's life insurance. I'm sure she would like her caregiver paid, the one who took care of her in the last couple of months of her life. The counterclaim, which is ridiculous, is dismissed as for the reasons I already said. The fact that the defendant may have either smoked with or allowed your mother to smoke in the last couple of years of her life is ridiculous. You know, you're the one who said to me, my mother is my mother is my mother. She'll do what she wants to do. Not something like that. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Your Honor. You're done. So is your counterclaim. $2,600. This court is adjourned. You know, my mom's deaf. I've been doing everything I can to make sure that she was taken care of. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunate. I'm really happy with the decision today. I was glad that she was able to see through all the lies and everything. The plaintiff would give her cigarettes to stash for her so she would not ever indulge herself smoking cigarettes. Yes, I would go and get her the cigarettes because that was her last thing that she wanted, so. At best, while taking care of my mom, she did a pretty good job with that. I've never denied that. I've also wanted her to get paid. Just blamed it on IHH, IHHS and just, there was no really reason for him not to pay me at all. I've been ready to put it behind me. This has been a nightmare since my mom's death and right before that. So I'm glad, to, I'm certainly glad to get it behind me. I really did give her the best care that I could, you know. Um, she was happy. She was very happy, so I'm okay with everything. Cases like this are sad, but it really shines the light on the whole sector that is elder law. And there's so many federal and state programs to make the elderly and vulnerable feel more comfortable to be able to stay in their home, to be able to pick their own provider. But unfortunately, because of all the overlap and lack of oversight, there's a lot of fraud that takes place with the most vulnerable population. And like you were just talking about, your mother is the one that you rely on for a majority of your younger years, you know, to well, make, keep you alive, bathe you, feed you. And towards the end, it's just unfortunate that they don't receive the same care as we do in the beginning. Yeah, that not being watched as carefully by the people that they cared for. 
Yeah, or, but I, the, the plaintiff here surprised me. I mean, working two months, five days a week. And she stuck for, with the job. W for no money yeah. and no real end in sight for when she was gonna be paid. I, I respect her for that. She obviously cares about her business and about her craft as being a healthcare worker, so I appreciate that, but it shouldn't fall on kind-hearted people like that to take care of our elderly. Maybe, not sure. Yeah. I, th I think that not everybody is fortunate enough to have children. Yeah. if you have children that fit into that mold. And I think that it's wonderful that the state for those people that don't have loving families to support them if mm. they're sick or elderly, for the state to provide a mechanism for those people to get from their bed to a bathroom, yeah. to another room, to a meal perhaps. I think it's wonderful. I think that this country, Sarah, can't do everything. Yeah. And I know that we discussed a moment ago not bringing in another case, but to me, when you don't give money to somebody who did work in the betterance of society and you st send stimulus money to prisoners who were there because they did something wrong and you send $1.2 billion in stimulus money to people who are serving life terms in prison, to me, doesn't make sense. But perhaps somebody will straighten me out a couple <laughs> yeah. of cases from now. Maybe, we'll see. Thôi, vậy là với cách gấp rất là đơn giản như những chiếc quạt mà chúng mình đã làm xong một bạn cáo vô cùng xinh xắn và dễ thương rồi đấy. Chúc tất cả các bạn sẽ làm được một bạn cáo thành công nhé. Xin chào và hẹn gặp lại.